I will tell you that my mother brought me up that there was no such word as can't. And as a child, you went, yes, there is. You spell it. No, no. <laughs> no such word as can't. Or Mr. I can't die. That's what, that's, <laughs> that's what my mother used to always say. And uh, as a result of that, you know, she would never accept excuses. And um, we did that for our own sons, too, as they were growing up. Excuse. I, it's the last thing I ever want to hear is an excuse. If there's a way to get it done, let's talk about that. Let's not talk about why you didn't get it done. <laughs> <laughs> now, that probably leads me to Rust of Ann because Wake Up America Media Network is a can-do thought that started, and I know you want to ask a couple of questions, too. I do. Um, Dr. Carson, first I want to say that I've been following you for some time now, and for me, one of the most refreshing things about you is your unbelievable humility in all that you've, all that you've done, your, your soft-spoken manner, uh, the way I've watched you, uh, uh, the way I've watched you make your point so cogently in a conversation without even raising your voice. And I think that in our country right now, one of the problems is we have a lot of divisiveness. And I personally don't feel it's ideology that's the problem. I think that ideology is one of the gifts of our society because people are free to think and believe and have opinions about things. Unfortunately, people speak their opinions a lot of times like they're facts. I think the enemy is just as you've cited is ignorance and apathy and complacency. So, so your question. My question is, I had to set it up. My que I, yeah, I'm talking, taking all the time. Do Dr. Carson, what, what do you think we need to do to drive a stake through the heart of ignorance and apathy and complacency, to, to wake people up? Well, I think, first of all, we, we have to uh, utilize our own lives as the example. And uh, we must become uh, well-informed individuals. That means spending time reading, exposing yourself to many sources of information, using this incredible brain to analyze the information, and to be able to come up and explain the rationale for one's beliefs. You know, it's very often, uh, you know, I f find myself in conversations about how a scientist can believe in God. And uh, I just simply ask the person a series of questions. I say, well, you don't believe in God. Can you explain to me how something came from nothing? Well, they can't, of course. And I say, so I'm just going to give you that, that there was something. Now, explain to me how there was a big explosion, and all of a sudden we had a perfectly organized universe and solar system. <laughs> uh, exactly how does that work, particularly in light of the second law of thermodynamics, entropy, which says things move toward a state of disorganization. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I keep going down the list, and, and pretty soon they're like, duh. And I say, exactly. You have faith. That's why you believe these things. You don't have any evidence for it. Uh, I have faith also. I'm not going to denigrate you for your faith. I don't have that kind of faith. I admire you for that kind of faith. Uh, but you shouldn't denigrate me for mine. And, and you can do that in a pleasant way without making someone feel stupid, even though they are. <laughs> uh, as a follow-up question, the other day on the radio, I, I loved it when you, when you, you, uh, you cited that... Um, that business in Washington is pretty much business as usual. And one of the things I've heard you talk about before is uh, the paradigm of health care and a solution to that that I have actually heard before, but you said would be so interesting to implement. Would you, would you say a few words about that, please? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I be, first of all, I believe that health care is not a right, but I do believe it is a responsibility for compassionate people. And we do have the resources to do it. We spend twice as much for health care as the next closest nation in the world. So there are a number of components. Uh, and Save Our Health Care, if you go to that website, it'll tell you the whole thing on the American Legacy Pack. But the key thing is, is health savings accounts over which each individual has control. And we have a variety of different ways of funding them all of which are much less than what we're spending right now. And it gives people real autonomy. And it makes everybody of equal value in the healthcare system. Right now, you know, a physician may have 12 slots. He says, well, 
10 of them I'm going to save for, you know, paying patients and one for Medicare and one for Medicaid. That stuff goes away. Everybody becomes of equal value, which is really tremendous. But it also brings the whole health care system into the free market system. And that's what controls quality, and that's what controls price.